everyone. Good afternoon and uh, assalamu alaikum to our local uh, Pakistani participants and our seniors. Uh, I'm Arslan Shabir working as a regional manager poultry from last three years with Alltech Pakistan. Hope all of you are good and doing well in your respective departments. And uh, as we all know that COVID has changed a lot of things and especially we are uh, adopting or trying to build our new strategies of working. But uh, luckily, in the last four months, uh, Alltech Pakistan is the pioneer to start our the online webinar series uh, through our ABCD TV. And we have uh, a lot of subscribers now our days. And we cover all the livestock uh, segments on poultry side, on aquaculture, on dairy side. And uh, today's our webinar on uh, redefining mineral nutrition in parent stock and layers. As we all know that uh, parent stock as a major uh, segment of our poultry industry that uh, we get the hatching eggs and the progeny that fulfill our uh, protein uh, requirements. So before going to introduce our uh, guest speaker, uh, I request to all of my participants, please uh, mute your mic and uh, for uh, your questions in bottom of your screen, you have that chat bar, you can put your questions there. And uh, I update to all of you that our this session is uh, live on Facebook and YouTube. So uh, the participants who are joining there, they can put their questions in comments. So we try uh, at the end of the presentation, we try to answer them all. And if you want to ask the live questions, so in the bottom of the screen, uh, there is an option of raise hand. So you can click on that and we unmute your mic and uh, from your side as well. So we can ask the questions from uh, our guest speaker. So I formally and warmly welcome to all our participants. Uh, I introduce our guest speaker is the professor, Dr. Fernando Roots uh, from Brazil. He is a very vast experience in poultry industry uh, in different regions of the world and is working with academia as well. So uh, as we, I mentioned that uh, we are uh, warmly welcome to all our participants and before starting, uh, I request to uh, Fernando, please uh, you can uh, share your screen and uh, then we can start our session. So handing over to your roots, uh, please uh, start your presentation and then we uh, carry forward. Thanks. Can you see it? I just shared the screen, can you see it? Yes, we can. Okay. Now let me put full screen here. Yes, you can fully. Well, good morning. Um, good morning for me. Good afternoon for you people. We are eight hours apart. And uh, it's my pleasure. And I'd like to thank you for the invitation. And uh, I'd like to speak a little bit of this, uh, our experience in Brazil with this organic minerals, uh, bioplex and cellplex. Just to introduce, we have here, we got the pointer. Uh, let, let's go back some years ago and what, what we are today, okay? Uh, Listen and Summers published in the, the year 2000, that at th that time, the, the birds were picked like 85% in egg production, and that time up to 64 weeks of age, they would produce 150 chicks. And this is the situation right now in Brazil. Okay, comparing, I just talked to Dr. Imperatore, that uh, works for, the, for uh, the industry in Brazil to get this data. And he said that uh, in Brazil, they are producing from 158 to 165 chicks, and they are producing 109 in, in 2005 eggs. So this would be the difference from the year 2000 to what we have nowadays. Huh? It's also good to remember that uh, modern broiler uh, today, they can grow close to five times what they could in the year 1957. And uh, to reach market, uh, they go like a half a day up to one day uh, each year less. Uh, actually today, the, the, the numbers are about 0.4 days a year. That means every two years and a half, we would have one day less to slaughter the broilers. Uh, by the 90s and also up to, let's say, the year 2000, uh, we would say at that time that uh, as the broilers were gained so fast and making so, putting on so much weight, the fertility 
would drop. And the infertility would drop to such, such a way that uh, we, we had to start with the artificial insemination. But actually, this is not what we saw. And actually, what we saw is that the birds kept on growing and kept on producing each time more eggs and chicks. So there is a negative phenotypic and genetic correlation between growth-related traits and reproductive performance that leads to fertility problems. And the negative relationship between excess nutrients intake and reproduction will be altered by managed strategies, including feeding. That's what people used to say that in, like people in Albert. What about this nutritional progress? How can we feed these modern breeders to meet the genetic potential? So if we go back to the year 1994, the last NRC, and we examined all the, the data that we had at that time in terms of minerals, you can see that all this data here are very old. Most of the studies that were conducted with uh, minerals are studies from the 30s, from the 40s, the 50s, and uh, they were not updated anymore. And that it's very interesting that if you examine which species really were uh, tested for, were examined, you have pullets, you have layers, you have broilers, but you do not have breeders. And I remember one talk, Dr. Leeson mentioned that, when well, he participated in this last 1994 edition, he said that there is no breeders here because there was no data on breeders at that, that time in minerals. So all the, the data that we had in minerals for breeders in the 1994 edition are estimated data, not really tested data. So then the situation today right now wouldn't be that much different from what it was the year 1994 because of the difficulty you have in uh, layers, in, in, in breeder uh, trials because most uh, researchers don't like to work with breeder trials uh, in some cases because uh, it's very difficult and by the end of the, the trial you may lose everything. So they prefer to work with broilers, which is faster, uh, or, or with layers, mainly with broilers and layers uh, to do their, their research. So you do not find that much of data in terms of breeders. And it's very, important to remember, and this is a, a, a chart that is really uh, serious here, because you, they interact with each other, all these minerals, sometimes positive, synergistically, sometimes negative. That means they adversely interfere with each other. And there are some studies that have been conducted in Brazil right now with broilers, and uh, not breeders, but with broilers, and they saw that uh, sometimes when we study, let's say, zinc, we just concentrated in zinc and we forget all about that zinc is inter, inter, interacting with other minerals. And maybe zinc, if you use zinc in your, uh, let's say, bioplex zinc, you may increase also manganese uh, the, the storage in, in the tissue, but you may decrease iron. Something like that happens. And this is are some trials that have been conducting with broilers in Brazil right now. So this is true. That's what I want to tell you. This is true. You have to take it into account. And this is different from vitamins because except vitamin A and vitamin D, the other vitamins do not interact with each other. But minerals, this is serious stuff. That means the less you put, then if it is more available, the better it is. That is, they are not going to interact with each other. Just to introduce to you some of these organic minerals, uh, here you have an amino acid called methionine, and with this methionine over here you have a sulfur. And what is selenomethionine? You just replace the sulfur by selene. That's what it is. Who does it? The yeast. You have a culture of yeast, and you, then you put uh, selenite, the inorganic form, and the yeast, by building up, by synthesizing methionine, the, the methionine, what it does is just replace sulfur by selenium. So then you have selenium methionine. But this is not the only form that you have, let's say, in cellplex. You have selenium cysteine and 20 other more forms, which are also active. And this is now <clears throat> what, you, what you call a chelate. Here you have an amino acid, 
you have another amino acid and uh, this copper here cannot react with any other compounds because it is completely hidden here between two, two amino acids. Could be here a dipeptide, a tripeptide, it didn't matter. Uh, about availability of selenium in that form, a study that was conducted in 1987 already showed that if you compare selenite with yeast, yeast would be the organic form of selenium, either in blood or in heart. In the yeast, that means the organic form of selenium, you would have higher bioavailability. And it's also good to remember that, you have, let's say, selenium methionine, it's going to be recognized by the organism, by the genetic code, as if it was a methionine. And that's the reason why you can deposit in heart, blood, eggs, milk, whatever you have, you are testing there. Another study that was conducted at University of Kentucky, here you have selenite, and here you have cellplex. So that means if you have organic selenium, you have more in the deposition in the hole. Reason why? Because this form here is recognized the, the organic form is recognized by the genetic code as if it was, let's say, a methionine, and then it's deposited as selenium methionine. So what would be the role of selenium then? Selenium is a component of an enzyme called glutathione peroxidase. And this enzyme, basically, it acts in the cytoplasm of the cell, and it interacts with vitamin E, which is mainly deposited in the membrane against free radicals. In case you have a deficient deficiency of vitamin E and the selenium, the free radicals are really free to, to damage the membrane and also to damage the, the proteins that you have inside the cytoplasm. So and it's very easy for them to have a rupture of the membrane and all problems with the proteins inside the cytoplasm. What about manganese? If you go to biochemistry books, you have several uh, pathways in which you have manganese uh, participating there. But I just chose one that I think would be interesting for us that are in poultry side. So manganese would participate as a glycosyl transferase enzyme cofactor. And this enzyme actually, at the end, will work in connective tissue, synthesis of connective tissue. And you know that connective tissue you find in shell membranes and also connective tissue you find in bone matrix. Actually, shell membranes and bone matrix are very close in terms of composition. And in both, you have manganese participating there. So with this here, you have the eggshell. What about zinc? Again, if you go to biochemistry book, you'll find 200 reactions in which zinc participates. But I just chose one that I believe is one of the most important here, is that zinc participates in what is called the zinc fingers. Zinc fingers are proteins that act in transcription. That means the connection between DNA and RNA. And by the end, basically we are going to talk about protein synthesis. Doesn't matter if you talk about feathers, doesn't matter if you talk about uh, 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 the immune cells or the growth proteins, etc. All of them you have protein synthesis, you have their zinc participating there. So, the organic zinc and uh, immunology in birds. If you use organic zinc, you increase the cellular immunity in chicks. You increase the transference of immunity from breeder to chicks. You increase macrophage activity, and you increase the viability of the offspring challenge with E. coli. This is all studies that were conducted in the literature. About the organic minerals, then we, uh, let's talk a little bit on cellplex, bioplex zinc, bioplex manganese, and why they are more efficient than those the inorganic minerals, why they help the performance of the breeder. When we talk about uh, reproduction and her productive effectiveness, we have to talk about four steps. That means the ovulation rate, the male and female fertility, hatch, 
and post head. Talking about the first one. Talking about the, the first one. Cannot move here. Don't know what happened. Okay. Okay. Here, here it is. Uh, this is the oviduct of the hand. This is the ovary, and these are the follicles. See that they are not attached. The ovary and the follicles are not attached to the oviduct. So every time that you have a, an ovulation, there is a yolk coming out of the follicle, and it has to be catched by the first part of the oviduct that is called the infundibulum. From here on, you have the magnum that will secrete the albumin, the isthmus that will secrete what is called the, the shell membranes, and the uterus that secretes the shell itself. And from there on, you have to just go outside. So here you have the follicles. So every time that you have an ovulation, hopefully it will fall inside the infundibulum. And if you have a sperm cell over here, talking about breeders, having a sperm cell, this is where fertilization is going to take place. So hopefully one ovulation, one egg production. This is what we are going to have. And how, wh wh what does zinc and selenium have to do with it? So you have a hypothalamus here, you have the pituitary, and then you have the ovary. Exactly here in the pituitary, anterior pituitary uh, gland, you have zinc and selenium that act. Why? Zinc participates in the synthesis of the receptors for these hormones that come from the hypothalamus. And selenium gives all the stability, the uh, uh, oxid uh, oxidative stability, antioxidant stability through the glutathione peroxidase for these receptors. In this way, this hormone is going to work better. Let's go to the stigma. That is this part of the follicle that is going to be ruptured by the action of LH, a hormone called LH. Here it is, the LH. So again, for, for this receptor in which LH is going to act on, to be synthesized, you need zinc, so the zinc fingers. And then giving the stability of this receptor for it not to be damaged. So like, because this is like key in the lock, you need to have selenium. So in this case, it is going to work. You're going to have one ovulation. The organic minerals versus settable eggs. So how does organic mineral work in this? So at the, at the end of the story will be the, the yolk. So in, in this case, cellplex will produce you the glutathione peroxidase, and glutathione peroxidase give you stability starting in the intestine. Starting in the intestine. So it makes it will make that the receptors for all the nutrients that are going to be absorbed in the intestine are going to work better. And also the zinc, again, through the zinc fingers, it is going to work in these receptors. So and the transportation of the, all these uh, lipids and proteins to the liver, and from the liver, then it goes to the follicle, which is in the, the ovary. In this case, we'll have more, some, some more yolk nutrition deposition there. This is one study in which uh, Bioplex was used. In this case, was selenium, zinc, and manganese, combination selenium, zinc, and manganese, and the yolk weight was evaluated. It's not very much, but it's a little bit. It goes, let's say, from 16, maybe to 16.6, something like that, in the, the yolk. So if you have more uh, uh, substrate there, you have, it will be better for the chick. And also the albumin weight. In another, some other study here, examine the cell plex in albumin weight. You can see that increasing Cellplex in the diet, there was a little improvement in also in albumin rate. So you have a little bit more of a, a yolk, a little bit more of albumin that can make the difference for the chick later on. About the shell thickness, by using this uh, selenium, zinc, and manganese in this organic form, the same study here has shown that 
you can have an improvement in shelf thickness that goes maybe from 0 0.44 up to 0 0.46, 0 0.48 by the end. What about the shell formation? Here you have a shell. This shell is form of a calcium carbonate. Calcium comes from the feet and calcium comes from the eggs too. And uh, you remember that uh, the, the, the bone represents 25 to 40 percent of the calcium that participates in a shell. The rest comes from the feet. Feed is from, from 60 to 40, 75 percent, and from the bone, calcium comes from 25 to 40 percent. So, you need to have a good bone and also good feed to have this calcium here. And the, the carbonate part comes from one reaction that you have in the shell gland in which zinc participates as a component of an enzyme glutathione per, uh, carbonic anhydrase. And this carbonic anhydrase would provide you the bicarbonate. So we have bicarbonate here with calcium, then you form calcium carbonate. So this is the, why the importance of zinc in this reaction. What about uh, organic minerals and fertility? Uh, hand, the, the, the poultry have one, uh, one quality that uh, one trait that other species do not have. That means it can store the sperm cells in the sperm storage tubule. So all, all you need is just one, fert one fertilization, one uh, artificial insemination or one fertilization from a rooster into a hen for you to have from five to seven days very high fertility here. It doesn't matter if it's in diluted or not diluted sperm cells. This is what, what you need. And you people know that, uh, for example, some countries use artificial insemination like uh, India and uh, some France, I think, believe also Sri Lanka. I don't know about your guys if you use artificial insemination, but some countries use it mainly in terms of artificial insemination. Uh, and turkeys, if you go to turkeys also, it's basically artificial insemination. And what they did is that every once in a while they inseminate and they have very high fertility here. Why? Because the hen can store the sperm cells in the sperm tubules. This is what you have here. But for this to, to happen, and you have this, uh, this uh, sperm storage tubules here, I mean between the vagina and the shell gland, and also in the infundibulum. So for you to have this uh, sperm storage tubules working correctly, you need to have antioxidant protection. And cellplex or cell organic selenium as a component of the glutathione peroxidase will give you this, will help will give you this protection. Of course, this is not only selenium. You would have also the uh, role of vitamin E here. You have a role of uh, these pigments called cantozytin. You have uh, as uh, zinc, you have vitamin C, you have uh, copper and manganese working on some other enzymes that also will help protect in this sperm storage tubules. Huh? So in this case, the bird can release slowly these sperms that as soon as the uh, ovulation happens, in around 30 minutes, all this fertilization is going to take place. So if you have sperm cells, they're going to be here, waiting for the yolk. Having sperm cells here, having the yolk coming down, probably one fertilization is going to happen. So what the role of cell plaques in this case would be to protect sperm storage tubules. Thus, with this, you have one improved fertility. Also, it's good to remember that just one to 2% of the inseminated sperm cells enter the sperm store tubules. That means you're going to lose from 98 to 99 percent. So you better have better sperm cells and you have better sperm storage tubule to get these sperm cells. They need to be protected because they have to suffer a lot of from oxidation. These sperm storage tubules need to maintain a stable environment and a reduction of free radicals within the tubules is important for them to keep the sperm cells alive. And 
able to fertilize. Serina plays an important role in maintenance of fertility in hands, and this is due to glutathione peroxidase providing, improving the envi environment of the sperm storage tubes, is one opinion of one very famous scientist called Peter Sturai. Good to remember also that uh, if, if you examine the, the yolk, you have what is called the perivitrin membrane there, just surrounding the, the yolk, and you have a white spot there. And this is white spot is called the, the germinal disc. This is where the sperm cells want to penetrate. And different from a male, my males, uh, you have one sperm cell that penetrates in sperm in uh, mammalians, and they, then they block. No more sperm cells penetrate in the germinal disc. In chickens, it's completely different. The more they try to penetrate, the better the fertility. So the number of sperms in the perivitrin layer is representative of the number of sperm cells stored in the oviduct. And quantification of fertility is determined by the occurrence rate of perivitrin rolls caused by these sperms. So this here you have, the, here you have two hands, huh? two breeders. One that received the selenite, the inorganic form of selenium, the other received the cellplex. So you can see the difference. All of, each one of these rolls here represents the attempt of uh, a sperm cells to penetrate and fertilize. Uh, in, uh, when, the, when the hands receive the inorganic form of selenium, you have much less of these holes that you can see here. And when they received organic selenium, when they cell plex, you have much more holes. So uh, this bird here would more probably, more probable to be fertile than this one here. And what about the quality of the rooster sperm cells? A work from, from Frank Edens in the North Carolina State University has shown that by using organic selenium, you also have a better sperm quality. Other study from Dr. Edens has shown the source of selenium sperm abnormality. It was a basal diet, one with selenite and the other one with cellplex. And here you have what's called the number, normal sperm cells, and those here uh, have problems, right? Abnormalities. And uh, just by adding selenite to the diet of these uh, roosters, you improved the, norm, the number of number of normal sperm cells. And by organic selenium, you, use, you improve even more the number of normal cells. Uh, about the abnormalities, you can see there was a decrease by using selenite and uh, even less the number of abnormalities in sperm cells by using organic selenium. So selenium is an organic source, it reduces the production of defective sperm cells, thereby having a positive effect on fertilizing potential of roosters. This gentleman here worked at the University of Alberta, and what I just showed you here comes from the North Carolina State University, two people having the same opinion. If you examine the rooster sperm cell, just a little bit more on, on that stuff, you can have the head, the mid piece, and the tail here. And exactly here in the mid piece is, you have lots of mitochondria. Why you have mitochondria? Because you need energy there. Because this mid piece is what makes the, the sperm cell to move. So you have lots of this structure there, which is called the mitochondria. But for you to produce this ATP, for you to have this energy source here, ATP, you also produce a lot of free radicals. And this is exactly in this meat piece here, where you have lots of vitamin E and lots of selenium concentration, really to protect against the, the, the oxidative uh, attack here. Hatchability. Egg fertility and embryonic development are factors that influence hatchability. Of course, you need to have egg storage conditions, broader breeder age, diet, everything can, can have an effect. Okay? 
So the decrease in hatchability and fertility associated with an increase in age might be due to older hands' inability to hold sperms in sperm storage tubes. Let's see one example and one study that was uh, conducted in Brazil. This was an embryo diagnostic study, a bioplex for breeders. It was a field study in a very famous company over here. Uh, they used cow breeders, 150,000 birds each. The birds uh, received the experimental diet from 45 to 65 weeks of age. So they, they just had a, a control diet. They pick up 8,000 uh, 8, eggs. And from the one that uh, were bioplex and cellplex was added, which you have over here, they got uh, close to 10,000 eggs. So they just examined this, right? So these birds here received the cellplex, bioplex, bioplex manganese from 45 to 65 weeks. And this here was just a control group. Most of what they examined was the same, didn't change. But there were some few exceptions here. You can see here, these are the birds that received cellplex and bioplex, that means organic minerals. And this is the control group. Uh, about hatch, hatched eggs. So by giving the, the breeders cellplex and bioplex, there was an improvement in hatched eggs and a decrease in infertility. So there was improvement in reproduction performance here. Also, what called the attention was that by examining the embryo mortality, one to seven days, one, uh, eight to 14, nothing happened. But when we went to the late part of embryo development, 15 to 18 days and 20, 19 to 21 days, there was a decrease in mortality of embryo when the breeders received cellplex and bioplex. Right? So, and at the beginning, we did not, not know exactly what was going on here. And, but later on, people examined the literature. People in Kentucky, University of Kentucky, Dr. Cantor and Payton, Neil Payton, they published this paper here in which they compared no added selenium with selenite or then with uh, cellplex. And uh, you can see here, no matter which source, of selenium you're using to. From day 10 to then 15 of embryo development, there is an uptake of selenium by the embryo, regardless of the source. And uh, if you examine vitamin E, it would happen exactly the same. From day 10 to day 10, 15, the embryo uptakes more vitamin E. And of course, if it's uptaking more vitamin E and selenium, it is also uptaking more fat. And you know that part of the lipids are unsaturated and unsaturated fat can oxidize. So this is kind of mother nature that makes that since you're going to the, the chick, the embryo is going to absorb, it's going to uptake more fat, it needs to be protected. And this is the way we interpret this. And uh, by being protected, you need to have more selenium inside the, the, the egg. And this is maybe the reason why if you use cellplex by the, the, the breeders, you will protect more of the embryo. And then in this case, you'd have less of mortality by the late period of embryo development. That means the chick, the embryo is more protected. Some other observations that come from literature, tell us that there is a reduction in yolk, zinc, and manganese content in older hands. And some other uh, investigator said that the inadequate transmission of zinc from hand to hatching egg is likely responsible for low hatchability and poor chick quality. What about uh, organic minerals and offspring performance? So there is a positive relationship between egg weight and chick size. One gram difference in egg weight results in 0.5 grams increase in chick size, bringing about five grams increase in body weight 
at 42 days of age when usually the bird is slaughtered. So one gram egg, 0.5 grams chicks, five grams per bird by 42 days of age. Penn mentioned that by using cellplex, improve the weight gain in 1.2 grams. Let's examine this study here from uh, Dr. Sarai, in which he used the source of selenium breeder diets and examined the, the hepatic, that means the liver, antioxidant profile of chicks at hatching. So one group received the no selenium in the diet that was just the basal diet. The other one received the selenite, <clears throat> and these two last here got the number two, diet number two, plus 0.2 cellplex, number, diet number two, plus 0.4 cellplex on top. And by adding more selenium in the diet, of course, there was more selenium in the liver of the chicks. Of course, if it was more in the, more in the liver, it was beforehand. It, you have more in the eggs because they were at hatch. And what really called the attention here of the investigators is that not only selenium improved in the egg, but also vitamin E, vitamin A, and carotenoids. While all of them have in common, they are liposolubles. So there is a sparing effect also by using organic selenium, especially organic selenium, there is a sparing effect on all, lipo, on all liposoluble substances like vitamin E, vitamin A, and carotenoids in this case. And by having more of these compounds inside the egg, you have less of the peroxidation effect. Balonil, the, the high height is a measurement of uh, peroxidation. You can see that we have more selenium in the, in the diet, more selenium in the egg, more selenium in the liver, you have less of peroxidation of that tissue. So there is a protection there. Uh, and this kind of goes in the same direction if you think in terms of pigmentation, right? See, in this case here, by adding cellplex in the diet, there was an improvement in pigmentation of the yolk. It's not much if you really examine it because it goes from 7.7 .7 up to, to 8.2. But what calls our attention is that it was linear, 0.99. See, it was very much linear. That means the more you added on cellplex in the diet, selenium from cellplex in the diet, the better the yolk pigmentation happened, right? like 0.5. I don't know about your country, but there are some countries that uh, the, the yolk needs very high pigmentation, like for example, Me Mexico, in which if you do not have a, a yolk like orange, the client wouldn't buy the, that high type of egg. And uh, this other study here examined the, the source of selenium and glutathione peroxidase activity. Remember glutathione peroxidase that will help uh, destroy the free radicals that you can find inside the cytosol. So you have glutathione peroxidase, birds that receive no selenium added in the diet, it was just a control diet, 0.17 ppm of selenium and 0.2 ppm of selenium. So it doesn't matter if you talk about day one, day five or, or day 10 of age, all, all the time that you added cellplex in the diet, there was an improvement in glutathione peroxidase activity. That means this chick was more protected against the oxidative reactions. And maybe this was the reason why the study from Leninger and Iris in, uh, in England have shown that by using cellplex to the breeders and examine the mortality in the color of the chicks by 10 days of age, there was a drop in total mortality and culling, and here separating them, less mortality and less culling by adding cellplex into diet. What about delayed incubation? Extended periods of egg storage allow the albumin to degrade excessively, leading to embryo mortality. In older breeder flocks, the decline in hatchability starts one day after lay possibly due to deterioration in egg albumin quality. You can see that both of these investigators, they say basically the same thing. That means there is a decline in the albumin quality by the age of the hen. 
And this other investigator said that eggs from young breeders have better albumin quality, hatch better, and produce higher percentage of high quality one day old chicks compared to older breeders. So, how can uh, cell plaques he help you in this? Albumin consistency, albumin viscosity. So, compare, by comparing with your inorganic minerals and cell plaques alone, or in combination of bioplex zinc and bioplex manganese, you can see here cell plaques alone and examine the uh, raw units. This is a measurement that you use in the uh, table, table eggs industry. By using cell plaques, you have a better viscosity. So you have a better consistency of albumin as compared to selenide. And here you have a cell plex by, with a combination with zinc and bioplex manganese. Again, you have a better raw units by using organic minerals. Some field trials, cell plex alone or in combination of bioplex zinc and bioplex manganese that were conducted in Brazil. This one was a commercial farm trial in Santa Catarina State, it's a state here in Brazil. They had uh, host broil breeders, 6,000 birds per control group and 12,000 birds in the test group. From the period of 23 to 39 days, the birds received the cell plex, and from 40 to 55 weeks, they received cell plex and bioplex zinc. So you had a control group that received just inorganic minerals and a test group that received organic minerals. So by examining the performance of the breeders and fed these organic minerals, hen house egg production, hen house settable eggs, and by the end, the number of chicks per hen house. You can see here that they had a difference 1.3 in terms of percentage in egg production and hen house. And by the end, they had 3.6 more chicks per hand when they used the organic minerals. The same study has shown that probably the main reason why they have, at the end, more chicks is that they had higher egg production. And higher egg production may be translated in a better egg shell quality. This is something we have been observed not only in breeders, but also in hands, in table egg hands. Now I'm going to show you some meta-analysis. That means not to show you many studies. I'll, we are going to put concentrate them in just one meta-analysis with cell plex and bioplex zinc. So in terms of uh, weekly chick production, this is a meta-analysis of 10 studies. Control versus cell plex alone or bioplex in, in pet birds. You can see here there was an improvement around up to three to four chicks more when you used the cell plex comparing to control diet. So total chick production, control versus cell plex and bioplex. This is uh, again, 10 studies that were uh, analyzed and put together, two from universities and eight studies from the field. And uh, by the end, by using cell plex and bio in combination of bioplex zinc and bioplex manganese, you'd have around 3.6 more chicks per hen. This was from 25 to 55 weeks of weeks old hens. And uh, lately in Brazil, we have been uh, adopting what is called the total replacement. Total replacement. You just remove. The, or the inorganic form and you use the organic form. And some companies have been using it and I'm gonna show you the result of one of them, uh, just for you to have an idea what, what we, we people have been using in Brazil. This is what uh, industry, Brazilian industry would use, right? In the inorganic form, this is what the Brazilian companies would use. And uh, the total replacement, here you have the numbers, right? This is the organic form. This is inorganic, and this is the organic form. In this organic form, you have bioplex zinc, bioplex manganese, iron, copper, subplex, and also iodine. Uh, people usually, they do not like to, to give their data. Since they have, they, they hide it as a, as a, in the, 
in the company itself. But in this case here, one of uh, the salespeople, one, uh, one girl in Brazil is very close friend of the nutritionist of the company that I'm gonna show you today. And then she just gave this colleague of ours one, uh, one, one, one information, right? She didn't want to share more of the information what they have been getting. But they've been using it now for seven, eight years, this total replacement. And uh, by the end, they would have six more eggs per hen. When these people started using this total replacement, they never came back to inorganic minerals. And from this, uh, uh, from, from, from this amount of organic, from this amount of organic minerals I just showed you, they use 1.2 kilos. This is what they use, right? 1.2 kilos per ton of this amount here. Right? So this is one, one kilo product, right? And they use 1.2, and this is what they have been using, and they have been getting six more eggs. Very important company in Brazil, and but uh, they don't like to share the data they have. And this is basically the mostly what we got from there. Six more eggs per hand. So in conclusion from this uh, breeder trials, we can see that the use of cellplex, bioplex zinc and bioplex manganese, a combination of them, would improve hatchability, would increase the number of chicks per hand, and also improve the chick quality. Now I'm gonna show you quickly uh, some other studies that have been conducted in Brazil. This is now the total replacement of inorganic by organic minerals in table egg layers. This one was conducted in one university and there was then the replacing of inorganic by organic minerals or brown egg layers. It's published. And in this case, they used uh, 216 birds. They had four treatments, nine replicates, six birds per replicate, five periods of 28 days. The trial period was from 68 to 88 weeks of age. Yes, here are the dietary treatments. So this is what they used in inorganic form. And this is what they used in the organic form. So exactly the same, 100%. And they had 66% and they had 33% of this organic. So they went downwise. Let us see the results. They examine the feed consumption, egg production, egg weight, egg mass. This is the conversion per egg mass, conversion per dozen. And what called us attention is that the feed consumption was not statistically different, and so no significance. But when it came to egg production, you can see that the less minerals you add in the diet, in organic form, the better was the egg production. The better was the egg mass, the egg weight, sorry, the egg mass. The conversion was better, even in egg mass or per dozen, that didn't matter. And this is something that really called us the attention because the less you use of organic minerals, which is more available, the better is the performance of the hen. And uh, later on, they did some other trials in another university in Brazil that they've been conducting right now, and uh, which this university is the one that provided the, the basis for the last Brazilian tables of requirements for swine and poultry. And they observed there was there is a lot of interaction between these minerals, a lot of interaction. So the less you put in the diet, the less of a chance you give for these interactions to get into play. Some people would say, if a little bit of minerals is good, a little more is even better. It does not work that way. Tell you what, it does not work that way. You really need very low levels of minerals. Of course, but you want to provide it in one available form. And this is the reason why organic minerals will help you. So this was some production data. The same, the same uh, group, the same group examined the specific gravity, 
the shell thickness, the high units, the albumin, albumin height, shell percentage, and also the yolk. And you can see here that uh, some of them were statistically different, some of them are not. And uh, by using, again, organic minerals in 33% of is the requirement, you would improve the, the egg, the, the specific gravity, the shell thickness, how units were not affected. And uh, again, here you have the shell percentage was better and the yolk percentage was not affected, right? So you improve not only the production, but also the quality of the shell, which must be have an interaction there. Some other studies now, I'm gonna show you some field trials with uh, layer, table egg layers. And here you have a total replacement of inorganic by organic minerals. And please say, pay attention the time in which you already can see the effect. This study was conducted from 61 weeks of age up to 64 weeks of age. So we have four weeks here. Let's start one month later, see? Now, let's see, you have uh, not one kilo of, I just showed you in terms of the, the amount of minerals, but half a kilo. When we talked about the breeders, I told you 1.2 kilos. Now we are talking about table egg layers. I'm going to talk, tell you about half a kilo. Plus economies, I'm not sure if Pakistan has economies, but this is a combination of uh, organic selenium plus uh, algae, DHA plus vitamin C, right? Or organic selenium could be working here too. So, and then they, they uh, made the classification. They classify an excellent egg, excellent shell, low porous, highly porous, and thin shell, right? So one, two, three, four. Large eggs, extra large, jumbo, and total. In one week, in, in four weeks, what well, they saw that the excellent, egg, excellent eggs, you hear, see the increase by using these organic minerals. Right? See the increase here. So you have less of minerals and much better performance. So this study was from 61 to 64 weeks. 500 grams of total replacement, that pack I just showed you, plus two grams of economase. This water one was just 500 grams. Uh, here was no economase inside. This one was from 63 up to 67 weeks of age. Again, the same classification, uh, one, two, three, four. Exactly what we have shown you before. Excellent, low porous, highly porous, and thin. In the same week time, the same period, though, there was an improvement in excellent shell category. This other one went, went from 57 weeks up to 61 weeks. Again, excellent, low porous, highly porous, and thin, large, extra large, jumbo and total. Same results from uh, six, 57 up to 61 weeks. So it doesn't matter which age you're talking about. It was always an improvement in the eggshell quality. So you have, which is extremely important, table eggs layers, right? So in this one, again, 500 grams of bioplex plus 200 grams of economase. And this one went through 82 to 86 weeks of age. So older hands, exactly the same thing. So you have improvement and uh, excellent eggshell quality in just weeks. Right? Another study, this one was a total replacement of inorganic bioorganic minerals using Bioplex total replacement plus economase conducted by a different uh, investigator here. So this one, they had Loma, Loma layers, and they had Bioplex TR, plus economase and against the inorganic minerals. They went from 63 up to 80 weeks of age. So they classified the eggshell quality in excellent, good, thin shell and what they called the crack. Uh, 
they added one and two as just one here. They had the number three with thin and the crack with the last one. So the worst quality eggshell by using this total replacement of inorganic by organic selenium or organic minerals, there was a drop in cracked eggs, a drop. And this drop can be translated like 36%. So the total replacement of inorganic by organic trace minerals, the Bioplex TR plus economase reduced the hairline cracks in eggs from 8.2 to 5.3. And by examining what has happened here, you can see here, this is what is called the mammillary glands. And by examining this shell here, you can see lots of cracks. Sometimes you cannot see by just looking at it but it's over there. And I uh, don't know about your country, but there are some important supermarkets in Brazil that today they require to pass the eggs through a machine that can identify these cracks. Maybe the human eye cannot identify, but these machines can identify, and they wouldn't accept this type of eggs in their shelf there. So this is where you have the cracks that you see. So actually what you wanna see is this type of mammillary glands. If you have this type of mammillary glands, mammillary glands, remember, this is a place in the eggshell in which you're going to add the car calcium carbonate, right? See the difference here? If you have this difference here, you have a much better egg shell quality. And if you have this membranes with all these cracks here, you have this type of egg. All right, thank you for your attention. Thanks, Rod, uh, for an excellent presentation. Uh, hope all of our participants has been uh, seeing this presentation uh, very keenly. Uh, Rod, uh, we are receiving a lot of questions uh, in our chat bar. So uh, I try to ask uh, uh, one by one, uh, and uh, I try that uh, by keeping uh, in mind the time uh, duration, you will answer uh, all these questions. So firstly, uh, the question uh, from uh, Dr. Rizwan, He's asking that uh, during starter and growing phase of the breeder, uh, that organic mineral, uh, what are the organic mineral uh, uh, In this case, you, I, I can give you two advice. If you wanted to start using it before, like you said, the growing, growing phase, right? Hearing mm -hmm. and hearing, right? You improve a lot of the immune, immune system of the hand. Mm -hmm. And if you want to use it just in a later phase, you improve the eggshell quality. But if you want to use it beforehand, you also, and you tell you what, you will really help a lot in the immune system because cellplex or organic selenium, zinc, manganese, and copper, they all work perfectly in terms of uh, the, like an orchestra, let's say put it this way. It's an orchestra inside the cell that protects against immunity. Uh, if you compare, for example, cellplex with inorganic selenium, the, the selenite, uh, cellplex, the organic selenium, has an important role in not only as a component of the glutathione peroxidase, but it also stimulates the gene that codifies for glutathione peroxidase. So you have it in both hands, right? So you, you improve the immunity of the hand. Okay. Uh, the next question uh, from that uh, Mr. Rizwan as well, uh, that role of organic trace minerals, especially zinc in gut health, is there uh, advantages? Yes. Uh, I'll tell you what, one more advantage to that, what you, the gentleman just asked. You need to have, in this, this is a study I conducted myself, right? You improve the, the, the skin. Right, you, you improve the epithelial cell, epithelial cells of the skin. And as well, you improve the epithelial cells inside the gut by using Bioplex zinc. This is something very clear, and it's published in this study if the gentleman wants to see. Uh, remember that zinc participates in, a, in a one enzyme that is called the zinc fingers. And over there, you need to, to any protein that is going to synthesize needs to pass by these zinc fingers. 
because the basic transcription between the DNA and RNA. And not only that, zinc is a very important component of an enzyme called superoxidismutase. What does this enzyme does? Zinc, along with manganese and copper, all of them participate in this superoxidismutase. It acts in uh, ions of, ox uh, of oxygen, oxygen ions, and it translates, it uh, changes it to H2O2. And H2O2 is where glutathione paresis acts and converts it to water. So it's very, very important to have the bioplex zinc inside the, the, the gut too. Okay, thank you. Uh, and the one another question from uh, Muhammad Ali. Uh, he asked that, uh, as you mentioned, the uh, bioplex zinc and bioplex manganese and the selenium. So, what is the uh, more crucial role of hatchability, and there is any effect of sulfates on hatchability? Uh, this is this is all a pack, right? You have to to understand not one unique effect that in terms of, of hatchability. If the, you have a better eggshell quality that mm -hmm. will provide you a better uh, 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 hatchability too, right? So I, I would say that basically this is the main point, I, I believe, the, the egg, you improve the eggshell quality, and this will help you in, in hatchability. And of course, this embryo is much more protected. And by being more protected, uh, let's say that the last, last part of embryo development, I showed you one study there, you have more, absorption, more uptake of selenium by the embryo. They're like protecting the embryo from the unsaturated fats that can be oxidized. But of course, that study just examined the cell plex. It did not examine the zinc and uh, manganese, but they are all in a pact all together. And then you have a better, a more protected embryo for it to, to be hatched. Okay. And the one another question is that uh, role of organic trace mineral in heat stress, uh, heat stress of breeders? Um, uh, yes, uh, I will answer this question, not in breeders, but in hands, right? In table like hands. Physiology would be the same. This is the experience I had. Uh, a, study of, uh, a student of mine conducted here in, uh, in Brazil, the area where I have, where I live, you have uh, summer and you have winter in what is called summer and what we have, what is called winter. That means cold or hot. Like, like you mentioned before, you are close to the forest over there, right? We, we do over the same here in south of Brazil where I live. And uh, this is, to the student of mine conducted this study with cell plaques in the summertime. And uh, we had three levels of, of uh, organic selenium as cell plaques, 0 0.1, 0 0.2, and 0.3. And, uh, and, again, and of course, in the control diet was uh, inorganic selenium. There was a drop in the egg production in all of them, 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3. But there was, in this drop was very clear that if you had the highest level of organic selenium inside, that it was the 0.3, they suffered less. Then they suffered the, the following 0 0.2, 0 0.1, and those that suffer more was those that re received just the inorganic selenium. It was always good to remember that organic selenium you can store in the body. And if you can store in the body through what is called the turnover of the tissue, you can have this selenium in the moment you need. And you know that if you, have, if you put these birds in, in a heat stress conditions, the metabolism also is increased because you have lots of free radicals pro pro production over there. And cell plaques, of course, selenium will help you in protecting against them. Okay, thank you. So the question uh, is, so it protects. Okay, uh, thank you, Ruth. Uh, and with us, uh, the senior nutritionist from the industry of Pakistan, uh, Obed Saab, can you please uh, uh, switch on the mic of uh, Sir Gulrez? Uh, sir, can you have, uh, can you hear us? Sir, have you any question, uh, please, or any suggestion? Hello, sir, are you with us? Who, oh, me? No, no, okay. No, no, uh, you're can you somebody else, yeah. Okay, uh, Obasab, can you please switch on the uh, mic of Sir Nazir? Uh, 
Hanif Nadir sir. Sir. Uh, thank you very much, uh, uh, Roots. You had a talking experience. I mean, a wonderful practical experience with Cellplex and uh, I enjoyed it. Uh, uh, my question is uh, that in natural mating, uh, the urogenital tract, the pouch you were talking about, uh, how much amount of sperm goes into the yolk? At uh, the number of the, the yeah. uh, I have this. I have this number from different uh, trials and different numbers. I can. Mm -hmm. I can. Uh, send it to you, right? Because uh, some studies were conducting that, but they do not coincide the numbers. I believe depending on the situation you, or the way the people count, I'm not sure about that, you have different numbers. Some of them you can say thousands, some of them say hundreds, some of them say from 10 to 100. So they do not coincide. Because uh, I heard you saying, and it was very interesting that uh, as much sperm goes into the yolk, yes. as much is the possibility of uh, fertilization. So that was exactly. quite interesting. The, the, exact, that's exactly right. Uh, can I, can, let me ask people from Pakistan, can I show you this data? I just have to bring the, 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 the slide here. I just, yes, I, I yes, need to yes. stop. Yes, can I? Okay, yes, so yes, yes, you can. Just, just give me one second here. Okay, okay. We have received uh, almost uh, more questions uh, in our chat bar. Uh, so we try to reach them back uh, to all of your questions uh, through email or uh, try to uh, give them uh, answers of all these questions. And uh, with us, all our senior nutritionists as well, uh, I'm seeing that uh, Dr. Shanwa Saab, Dr. Akhtar Naseem Saab, uh, all are there. So I'm requesting to you, sir, that uh, if you have any questions, uh, you can be asked after this. I have some difficulty in projecting this. Okay, I, uh, I have to, to leave here and uh, no, I, okay. I just want to show this gentleman that this uh, what, because I, if I show him, I have two, three, four slides that maybe answer all his questions. Uh, what, what should I do here too? Can you please try it now? Yeah, I'll, I'm trying. It now. Uh, don't know if I have to leave here because I, I need to have to stop sharing one to pre pre present the other, right? Okay, you need to stop sharing first. Yeah, that's right, exactly. <coughs> no, Jesus, it's not really working here. Stop, uh, share the screen now. Let me see. Stop sharing. Now to share the screen. I think it's gonna make now. Yes, we can see. Doesn't open. Why it's not open? Sir, please first uh, open your presentation, then you can click on st uh, screen sharing. Can doesn't want to open. Doesn't Sir, for, to firstly, you open your presentation, then share your screen. 
Yeah, I did it before. I don't know what happened. Okay, if you're facing some issues, uh, we can. Uh... Wait, wait. Let's okay. we start. Let's let's finish it. Up. It's not helping. Let's go back. Sir, if we have an issues, uh, we can uh, share with Sir Hanif on uh, later on. Uh, uh, what a period. <laughs> I just wanted to close no this problem. Uh, no problem. I understood. But uh, my yeah. final question is that uh, once an egg is fertilized, is it called fertilized and it will, uh, it will, uh, because uh, we understand that the younger breeders or younger uh, long living birds, for example, table egg layers, uh, they have a different shell quality and they have different levels. Yeah. Uh, but uh, uh, we have here in this country uh, breeder cages, which they call family cages or whatever. Uh, they are doing uh, uh, artificial insemination. Mm -hmm. Good. But there are some people who are doing on the floor as well. And uh -huh. Get, they are getting a lot of contamination. Yeah. So the rep reputation of floor birds inseminated uh, or is not so well, and that has been studied also in a study. My question is that uh, uh, since the natural mating gives a lot of sperm and it holds the hen, younger hen particularly can hold on as much as two weeks of age, I guess so. So is the egg fertilized means it is fertilized or there could be a partial fertilization that uh, uh, the embryo, so-called embryo dies very early? Uh, what, that, what, what you're saying is called parthenogenesis and this happens in turkeys. Not it's, in not com it's not common in, in the hands. When once it's fertilized, it is fertilized. You know, when the egg comes out of the hand, it comes already, that means it's got, the incubation actually starts inside the hand, right? Because you have yeah. 41 degrees centigrade there. And it comes out with 30 to 60,000 shell, or 60 to 30 to 60,000 cells already formed. Hmm. And uh, it, it, it doesn't go to what is called parthenogens like it happens in, in turkeys. And it, it, is, it is fertilized, yeah. It is, and it's going to go on a, an embryo. It may die, right? It may die throughout the period. And this is what you call the early mortality. It can happen, but fertilize. But you're saying the uh, uh, floor hands, maybe you have, maybe we're having some contamination of the sperm cells there. This is because you have more dirty, right? More dust. And if the sperm cells are contaminated, they really die. I can guarantee you this because I worked a lot with uh, artificial insemination. And even my PhD is in the United States as well as in Brazil. And if you have any contamination with dust, blood, urine, things like this, tell you what, they really die. You, uh, and I believe this is probably the most, uh, most uh, serious problem. I myself, I'm an artificial insemination admirer. I love artificial insemination because I know it really works well, but it needs to be very clean, right? Uh, I don't know how many sperm cells you were uh, inseminating that, but usually you don't need more than 100 million sperm cells per insemination. And if you, I wouldn't wait two weeks. I would uh, do it uh, weekly and when they are older, I would do it every four days because the older the hand, the less of the capability of it has to, to hold the sperm cells. So uh, when do you think it is enough for uh, 
a week and when uh, when you start doing after four days what ages so i would say i would say 50 weeks on would be twice a week up okay. to uh, up to 50 weeks you can do it once a week all right yeah. uh, uh, and how many males you have to keep what per, uh, what percentage uh, you have to keep usually 3 to 3.5 per 100 per per 100 hands you don't need more than that so this means because about you, you know sir it's very interesting roosters you cannot trust them you know that you cannot trust the roosters today they produce a lot tomorrow they produce nothing or they produce a little bit and it's a lot of variation between the in between the roosters among the roosters right a lot of variation and uh, even if they're brothers or they among themselves it's very interesting and uh, they suffer a lot from stress too if you drop temperature, they do not produce the, the sperm cells. It's amazing. And tell you what, one more, more thing. You have to collect them daily. Mm. Don't give them a rest. Because if you start giving them a rest, the sperm cells, they start dying. It's amazing. They age and die. So mm. it should be collected every day. So you always renew the sperm cells. Because remember that... Uh, Generally, a rooster would mate 17 days a day, right? 17 days a day. But you're collecting it just once yeah. a day. So that makes the whole difference. And tell you what, this, I, I, the other day I was in Iran, and a gentleman over there told me that he has counted the roosters today, and they could make 100 times a day. Hmm. From what I know, it's 17 days, 17 times a day. And this gentleman said, it, they they counted it was a uh, uh, aviagen ross 100 oh. times a day can you believe that <laughs> it's a huge <laughs> difference <laughs> no i can believe iran particularly in the caspian area yeah yeah and uh, it's amazing mm -hmm. yeah and uh, but i would i would stay i would stay with the 17 i'm, I'm happy with that <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah good and Thank you, uh, every day if you collect them every day it's much better yeah good uh, can I can I send this information to people in Pakistan? They they will deliver it to you, right? They yeah. want the information. Well, on, on very there. kind of you. Very kind of you. Okay. One so, more question, Fernando, uh, uh, from Doctor Rizwan's side. Uh, he want to uh, know that what is the maximum safe level of total selenium in breeder feeds? Maximum safe uh, safe life, you said. No, maximum safe level of total selenium in breeder feeds. The, when it's go to the the organic selenium, it's extremely high. Doctor Edens has gone up to 15 ppm's. Can you believe mm -hmm. that? 15 ppm's with any problem, without any problems here. When so the organic selenium is extremely safe, but do not do it with inorganic selenium. Inorganic selenium really have a, a prooxidative effect there. Right, so you, you can use very high. Of course, nobody is going to use 15 ppm's of selenium selflex because it's extremely expensive there, right? So you can you can use the 0 0.3 ppm's of selflex, and you'll very very uh, should be very pleased with that. Yeah. So what you recommend that uh, in bioplex is the combination of all trace minerals having the selflex in that as well. So your recommendation yeah. is more than enough. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, I would recommend you to use. Uh, you, you guys have recorded it, right? Yeah. You have recorded in the presentation. Uh, there is one table over there that we've been using in mm. Brazil, right? And that it, it tells you what is the recommended level for breeders. I would put 1.2 kilos, mm -hmm. exactly what mm -hmm. the people have been using in Brazil. And there mm -hmm. you have you have the levels that that you should use. And tell you what, trust that uh, interaction among mm -hmm. the minerals, it is true. It is true. Okay. I'm much more convinced now than before through these studies that have been conducted in Brazil. It's really yeah. true, it happens, right? And you have better results. For example, table X layers, mm -hmm. use just 50% of what, what you have to use in one kilo. Try it, okay. see the results, 100% success. 100% success in Brazil with the, with that. You can you can do it. Okay. When they're better egg, you're gonna have eggshell. Okay. 
So I requesting to all of our senior participants, uh, if uh, having any of questions, uh, you can uh, raise your hands uh, so we can ask from Fernando and uh, then we close our session. Okay, thank you so much, uh, Fernando, and thank you so much for all of our participants to joining us and uh, stay safe, uh, stay healthy and stay home. Uh, but now uh, we are lucky that uh, all our uh, rest of uh, work is being started uh, slowly in Pakistan and uh, we are uh, hoping that in upcoming months or weeks uh, we are being uh, started regularly. Uh, so thank you so much for joining us and uh, keep uh, watching this ABCD TV and uh, in upcoming uh, weeks, uh, we have more sessions uh, on our live stock uh, segments on poultry side, dairy side, on aquaculture. So thank you so much for joining us and stay tuned with us. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye-bye.